If a good man is offended by my videos, it's because he partakes in the behavior that I address in my videos, and he knows it, and he also knows he's not a good man. That is the most shit logic I've ever heard in my entire fucking life. So basically, men can't stand up for themselves. We gotta sit in that chair like a nine-year-old and have this person scold us. Like, we don't know men. Like, we don't know what we're talking about. You know what? If you say you're a good man, guess what? You're not. You're one of the shitty men. You don't know what you're talking about. And pff, what? What? You, uh, you're, you, are you a man? <laughs> yeah. Men don't know men like women do. When your entire page is dedicated to sharing videos of the shittiest men on TikTok to generalize men for your female audience, we feel like we have to prove ourselves. Like, look, I swear to you, I'm not a bad guy. And that is because of women like you. It's not that nice guys finish last. It's because you're so focused on the shitty men in the race that you're not paying attention to the good guys that are actually crossing the finish line. What is something people are not ready to hear? I'll go first. The Tell a man that they should be providers is a form of misandry. Because it's an old gender role, is it not? And you assume a man should provide for you solely because they are men is a form of misandry. Just like if a man tell you your ass should stay in the house and cook and clean and take care of the kids is a form of misogyny. You assuming he should provide for you is a form of misandry. It's an old gender role. Get over it. Also, going 50-50 means that the man see you as his equal. Why do some of y'all get upset when the man asks you to go 50-50? Y'all want to be equal in everything else but finances. So you don't want to be the man's equal when it comes to finances. Ah, uh, okay. I still say what I said. <laughs>
They put themselves in harm's way to ensure the safety of our nation and our communities. I could go on. A society without good men, without strong men, cannot survive. And yes, there are men out there who are predators, but guess what? The best defense against a predator is a good, strong man. But your constant male bashing has disincentivized good men from being good. This serves no one. It's gotten to the point that good men are afraid of opening a door for a woman, of standing up so that a woman can take a seat, or of doing anything nice that good men usually do. This literally is ruining society for the rest of us. Stop. If you feel the need to continue to male bash, if you feel the need to rile against men when they do kind and courteous things, why don't you just wear a pin or a t-shirt to let these men know who you are so that they know who we are. We appreciate good men. Stop ruining it for the rest of us. If he wants a sandwich, you can make daddy a sandwich. <laughs> Most of the time. No, 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 no. Let me ask you this. Well, okay, let me ask you this. If me and you out and somebody say something slick to you, you punch him in the face. You want me to smack him in his mouth, yep, right? That's right. So if I take you on a date and I say, look, baby, we gonna go Dutch. No. Exactly. If we walking up to the car and I don't open your car door, what do you say? Open the door. You better believe it. Yeah, no, I, I am with you. I think So you make daddy a sandwich. I think. <laughs> You never want to test a man that is not afraid to be alone because you will lose every time. You see, the thing is, is that <clears throat> most men know they're alone. If I get hurt, I'm on my own. If somebody tries to rob me or kill me, I'm on my own. If I fall out of a fucking car going down the freeway, I'm on my own. If I get sick while being involved with somebody that has kids, I'm on my own. I've always known that. And dumbass me went and put it to the test. So I got confirmation of that. Many of you did too. You're never with a woman. You are always on your own. Women have the right to do whatever they want. She can go to the club as many times as she wants. She can post whatever she wants on social media. She can entertain as many male friends as she wants to. And of the many rights that she has, she also has the right to remain single. And you have the right to walk away as a man and only deal with people who exhibit the characteristics that are becoming of someone who wants a serious relationship. Understand this. The fact of the matter is that she wants the stability, comfort, and convenience of a relationship while still being able to function as a single woman. And the way she achieves this is by resorting to shaming tactics by calling you insecure, toxic, controlling, and a massage therapist when you set respectable boundaries that she is not ready to adhere to. It's not about what you're willing to allow. You can't allow a free woman to do anything. She's a free woman. But it is about what you're willing to accept. And when you put it that way, you are in full control of your environment and you disarm the shaming tactics. We'll convert your children. Someone's got to teach them not to. Boys and girls, nothing exists in the vacuum. That cutesy little video, my gay brothers, sisters, whatever they want to call themselves now and such, up in San Francisco, QAnon is reported, and of course it doesn't take too long to find out someone's criminal background, that six of the men featured in that video are convicted pedophiles. Okay? Boys up there in San Francisco, I'll tell you this right now, I used to sing in a choir with a lot of gay men in it. I have nothing against homosexual wolves. My issue, of course, is homosexuality, the practice. But that's on y'all, it's all good. Leave children out of it. And by the way, boys and girls, some shit ain't funny, okay? You do not make fun of children being assaulted. It's not funny. The biggest misconception men have about women. You think we don't want to be approached. No, see, men don't have that misconception. This is just the reality that we live in. Women believe this is flirting. You want him to approach you. You like him to approach you. But this is sexual harassment and sexual assault. 
women do want to be approached by men that they want or men that they find attractive. But us as men don't know what women do or don't find attractive in most cases, which is why we'll just not approach them because we don't want to be the sexual harassment guy. Y'all complain about guys not caring, but when a guy actually cares, y'all make him not want to. You know what's pretty sad? I'll go on TikTok and I'll see all these girls absolutely shitting on guys, saying how they suck, how all men are evil, how all men do this and all men do that, and that no guy should ever be trusted. But as soon as I try to say something about girls, or what I've been through, or talking about men's mental health, I get completely shadow banned where most of my videos don't even upload, and there's nothing even wrong with them. That just means TikTok flags my account, and they don't want me speaking about men, or our issues. And this most recent video right here that can't even be uploaded, a girl literally punched a guy in the face three times, and people were laughing about it. All I did was stand there with a shocked facial expression, and say if consent wasn't given, why is she not in jail? That is literal assault and battery. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Especially, you know, since we're in the age of equality, men and women are supposed to be treated exactly the same. However, if a guy were to do that to a girl, no one would be saying equality. People would be saying how awful the guy is. Yet people will just laugh if something like that happens to a guy. They're teaching children all the way in middle school and in certain kindergarten schools how to have anal sex, having these adults teach this and then showing them how to put on condoms and all that in preschool for some children doing these little demonstrations. In California, a new bill was passed called SB 145, and many people have coined this the pedophile bill. This is because this law offers certain levels of protection to some pedophiles. SB 145, they, you can be an 18 or 19 year old boy and you can have sex with an eight year old boy as long as that eight year old boy feels that he is a girl or he has LGBT leanings. We have to recognize that. ...is not a patriarchal norm. It's not. It's a feminist one. It's not toxic masculinity, it's toxic femininity. Or this one. Though not reinforced much in fictional media, in real life it is widely expected that a man would abandon his pregnant girlfriend and is incapable and or unwilling to take responsibility. Traditional masculinity has been constructed largely to hold men responsible for the children they help create. It was a masculine ideal among men. In fact, it was part of what could be considered to be a tradition of masculine honor. Socially constructed and institutionally reinforced by males themselves. If there are any feminists in the audience, I would like to ask you, do you agree with legally enforced child support? Do you think men should be held legally financially responsible for children they didn't agree to create because they gave their consent uh, to the, because they didn't give their consent to the obligations of parenthood when they agreed to have sex? More than this, what about women? If she didn't want kids, she should have kept her legs closed. I mean, we've all heard if he didn't want kids, he should have kept it in his pants, right? What do, you, what, what, what do feminists have to say about that, right? About women wanting to opt out of the responsibility that they took on, you know? They made their choice. If they made their choice when they had sex, like men do, then all of these things that feminists have brought about the morning after pill, abortion, safe havens, all of this stuff, right? Wouldn't that be toxic femininity? Wanting to get out of your responsibilities? Assuming, having a whole system based on the assumption that you would want to get out of those responsibilities? For women, sex and reprodu reproduction have been completely decoupled. Well, there is such a thing as an accidental pregnancy, there is no such thing as an accidental birth, and there's very definitely no such thing as accidental motherhood. Since even after birth, women have both a de jure and a de facto right to absolve themselves of the responsibility of parenthood. Motherhood is not the result of an accident, and it's certainly not the result of something men do to women through the 
massive, immense patriarchal power of their ejaculations. Not in this day and age. It's the result of a series of unilateral decisions on the part of any given woman. No woman in the West is forced to consent to becoming a mother just because she consented to sex. Yet feminism has only further codified the patriarchal norm that men should indeed be held responsible for the children that they had a hand in creating, despite the fact that nowadays women hold unilateral power of decision over You can have all the degrees in the world. You can have all the talents in the world. You can be a great looking guy. But after the infatuation phase wears down, that woman is going to show you who she truly is. All right? That makeup's going to come off. That wig is going to come off. That weave is going to come out. Whatever the case may be you're going to see her true crazy. You're gonna see it. You're gonna see if she's a needy woman. You're gonna see if she has promiscuous traits. You're gonna find out what many of you are going to fail to do in the beginning, and that's to filter a woman up front. Yes, if you don't ask, they will not tell you. I'm gonna say that again. If you do not ask, a modern woman, what she is truly involved in, she will not tell you. And even if you ask, you better make sure you remember what she told you. Because down the line, something else could come out. And if that happens, you damn sure got to cut her loose. But understand, if you don't ask, she will not tell you. You have to always ask a woman who you are dealing with and one who you are considering taking seriously what they are truly involved in. Are you married? I don't want to hear all why men always have to pay because women are the prize. As a man, you go out here, you work hard, you lose fat, you build muscle, you build great connections with people. You do all of these things and sacrifice to become the greatest version of yourself only to have to come home and deal with a woman like this. One who immediately comes off as argumented, combative, and aggressive. The same society that says women are the prize are the same society that says happy wife, happy life. Go check my last video. So I go out here and do all these great things and become this great person only to have to fund somebody else's lifestyle because they're the prize. Chill, yeah, right, nigga? One thing women have to understand, if you think like this, you realistically only want to fuck with a guy that's making massive amounts of money, meaning you will never be the only one. So by that logic, you're always going to be in competition with other women trying to get that prize. So who's really the prize here? Watch that's till right. the end. If you really want her, do something different. Stop asking her to the movies, or the dinner. She can drive there herself. Do something no one else is asking her for. Take her on fucking vacation, you cheap, broke bastards. This is the problem with our society nowadays. That men like this are telling your average Maria, your average Joe, that if he doesn't fly you out, he's poor. Let me tell you something, sweetheart. Most people are average, making average money, which means that you're gonna have to go on average dates. You know what I'm saying? Those standards, irrealistic. Drop that shit right now. Well, he needs to know my worth, cause if he really wants me, he needs to treat me like a queen. Hmm? What happened to the movies? Going out on dinners going out bowling having fun bike rides those are great let's be realistic how do you expect your average joe to fly you out when he has to pay mortgage bills whatever it is every month average people do average things why do men have this irrational fear that women are going to use them Child support, child support, child support, child support, child support. Each time was lowered because the first time they fucked up. So now she's trying to go after my visitation and all this, all these folders right here and pay stubs and you fucking name it, you name it, a discovery, more things. I got my taxes in here. 
Let's look inside of here. There's more shit. What I pay on health care, you name it, everything, everything, all of it. You're right. It, it's money we don't have. Maybe you still want us to come up with this imaginary shit. Caught on camera moments. The matter is, you can't make anybody happy. You have to make yourself happy. Happiness is a byproduct of achievement. So for women to say that they're unhappy, it's their own fault. Anybody who says he's unhappy, it's oh his own goodness, fault. Mark, Everybody I'm has to make himself or herself you're happy. You're giving me such a bloody headache. Yeah, I mean, where are you from? Where are you from, dear Trace, Lord? I would never in a million Trace. years teach my girls that they have to grow up to be reliant on a man, as you can well imagine. I would never teach my son well, that's that he should wonderful. be attracted. That's wonderful. But Tracy, you're to the same whoop, one. Whoop. You're the same one who bragged that she's so strong and so tough and doesn't need a man's money. Yet you're taking alimony. I oh. have three children. Okay, Mark. Who, Mark? Oh. You know what, so, Mark? but you don't need a man's money. All right, but that's it. So what I'm about to say is considered controversial in this day and age. But I want to preface this by saying I am all for female equality. I was the only girl on my football team growing up. I am a rapper in a male-dominated industry. I have a career in a male-dominated industry. I run my household, pay all my bills by myself, have my own vehicles, and manage everything on my own. But I also know that God did not design my life to be this way. I was not meant to manage everything on my own. I was not meant to be the nurturer and the disciplinarian of my children. I was not meant to be the provider and also the homemaker. And I'm aware of that. And it's my own decisions that have brought me here. And it's my own acceptance of the lies that I was taught in this society. Teaching men that they are not in fact the spirit heads of their households, that they are not the leaders of their households. We are shaming them for standing up in their masculinity and making decisions that would change and lead their families. And that's wrong. You know what I want more than anything in life is to have a man that spiritually leads me and my household. Why? because I'm in that position, because I have to. And I realized that I was designed to do other things, that I was designed and powerful in other ways. And I'm tired of managing it all on my own. I'm tired of being with men that I have to raise up spiritually because this society told them that wasn't their place. And because this society discouraged them from being masculine. And now I'm in a position where I have to take on a male and female role and act as if somehow I should be managing both. Am I capable? Certainly. But should I really be? No, I don't want to. We need to start encouraging men to stand firm in their spiritual positions so we can stand firm in ours. And I feel like if that happened, we would see way less broken families. We would see a stronger spiritual society and uh, we would we would be seeing a lot of healing um, I pray that that happens in my life and if not so be it and I'll stand in this position knowing I wasn't designed to be in both positions um, but I, I hope that this encourages the men out there um, to stand firm and stand firm in who you are and what you were designed to be. You were designed specifically for a specific role and position. Just out at a bar, black men were there. None of them talked to my friends and I, all pretty girls, black girls, none. First thing first, I don't understand why black females always trying to put us black men down for what? Like, why are you bringing race to this shit? This shit has nothing to do with the fucking color of your skin. What if we just want to have a guy's night out over drinks to discuss business shit like that? Y'all think we always go out just to approach females? Like, what the fuck? But baby, you gotta remember, beauty's an eye to behold her. You probably thought they looked good, but we probably thought they looked ugly, you know what I'm saying? And then a lot of y'all females type of got ugly friends so much that, yeah, I actually think that they look good when they really don't. And the reason why I don't approach girls in a big friend group because you yeah, always got that one hating ass friend who's ugly, right? She'd be like, nah, bitch, come on, let's go. When a guy try to talk to you, like, stop hating. And this is what I'll be saying, right? Everything is always the guy's fault, right? It's the guy's fault that they didn't go up to you. 
If y'all thought guys are good, why the fuck y'all didn't approach them? Oh, because females want everything. Give it to them, right? Fuck the world we live in. My last relationship taught me that you can be the total package and be at the wrong address. Ooh, somebody gonna feel that one in they soul. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Don't shoot the message. I just delivered a mail and it come from God's post office. Where's my father? Nowhere to be fucking found. You know why he was nowhere to be fucking found? Because I just, I just got a relationship with him a few months ago. Because my mom told me my dad wasn't shit to keep me away from my dad. But my dad didn't know. My dad did not. I thought my dad was a bitch ass fuck nigga. Cause that's what my mom called him. Mm -hmm. My mom didn't know. My mom, my mom told my mom. I'm 26, bro. I'm 26. My mom kept me away from my dad for 26 years. You know what kept me away from him? My mom told me that my dad said I was a mistake and kept me away from my fucking father. Every time this nigga been looking for me since I was a kid. Yeah. He's been looking for me. <coughs> Can you imagine all the kids out there who got a fucked up ass mom telling them their daddy ain't shit, but the daddy looking for him? I finally talked to my dad. He's a good dude. My mom told me my dad has not paid child support since I was a kid. I finally meet this nigga. He has a envelopes full of fucking shit proof showing he been paying child support. He told me, my, he said, your mom is a lying, manipulative bitch. I have not talked to my mom in months. You know why? My mom called me. My mom's in California. My dad's in North Carolina. I moved out of LA. I can't live in North Carolina or LA because I hate those places because of the trauma I went through on both of those places. My mom calls me. What you doing, baby? What's going on? I'm at my dad's house. What the fuck you doing at that bitch ass nigga house? Didn't I say don't discuss family business? Like, my dad comes and he busts through the door. My dad is happy and married. He's a street nigga. I can't talk about what he do, but he's a street nigga. He's happy and married. My mom has been bitter in having sex with so many goddamn dudes of different races, and she just got married recently to a nigga she met on Tinder for one month. My mom didn't get married because she was in love with the nigga. She was she got married because she didn't want to be lonely. Yeah. That's the point. My mom said, put, the, put my son back on the phone. And I'm like, and he's like, he starts off calm. He's like, hello? Put my son back on the phone. No, my, it's my son too. What do you want? Put my son back on the phone. And my dad loses it. You fucking dumbass bitch. You rapist bitch. You been molesting my child. I was going in on my mom. And I'm listening to my mom. All that slapping, abuse, and beating up, beating me up, choking me when I'm on the floor, beating me with belts, wrapping hangers around other hangers, beating me till I pass out, then wake back up, welts on my back, scars and shit. My mom turned into a two-year-old little girl when my dad started talking to her. So it's been brought to my attention that men no longer want to come up to women anymore. I have redone this video eight times now, purely because I have so much to say, but only 60 seconds. So I'm just going to speak from my perspective. Yes, we live in a generation where men just don't see it as worth it to shoot their shot anymore. And this is because particularly third wave feminism has created an extremely toxic dating space for men. Because for me personally, right, even though I'm introverted with social anxiety, even though I have absolutely zero idea how to flirt, when I was in like my first year of college, if I saw a girl I thought was cute, I'd walk up to her and ask her for a snap. But after like, what, three or four years of seeing this extremely toxic third wave feminism behonky, it's kind of made me start thinking, dang, is there even any upsides to dating in this generation? Through kill all men, all men are trash, black men are the weakest links, me seeing a whole bunch of girls glorify cheating and treating their man like absolute garbage. I'm just like, wow, this is awful. I'm still going to try to find like the right one, but this is going to be difficult. I'm a single father, I got one son, one daughter, I take care of them by myself. I pay for everything, I feed them, I clothe them by myself. I'm dating a chick who young, she don't got kids, and she always playing favoritisms to my son, only. 
Both my kids are respectful to adults. They don't talk back. They don't cuss. They don't get out of line. I observe everything. I'm always there. I can see that she played favoritism to my son. No matter what they doing, whether they eating too slow, jumping in the bed, being rude, standing up too late, walking around brushing their teeth, not drying off fast enough, forgetting to put on their deodorant, no matter what they doing, messing up something, spilling something, getting on their nerves, asking for snacks, she only got arguments and fights and rude things to say to my daughter. Always. Even my son notices it. Even he told me he thinks she too mean to her. But when I remind her that she'll never be more important than my kids and that she can go and it ain't no hard feelings, she don't want to leave. She want to stay. She even had the nerve to tell me she don't like when my daughter mentions her mom to her. What the f***? I know is if you dating a man with kids and he and his kids' life, respect it or get to stepping. Point blank. If a guy doesn't find me attractive, it's totally okay. No shame. First of all, ma'am, physically, you are attractive. The problem is, is after the mid-20s going into your 30s, men start looking at things other than your boobs and your butt. We start understanding at that point, you have a personality, how you treat people, your character, your values. Those become important to us. So even though you might be physically attracted, attractive the rest of you may be shit and if the rest of you are shit it doesn't mean we're gay it just means we don't want to sleep with shit so we go find somebody else that may not be as physically attractive but has a good heart that's your problem i never want to hear y'all argue that gender inequality doesn't exist the fact that a woman can falsely accuse a man of rape for the sole purpose of ruining his life just because he didn't want to sleep with her, then suffers little to no jail time, while the man on the other hand loses his entire reputation, job, family, and maybe even his livelihood, I never want to hear y'all argue that gender inequality doesn't exist. Or that a man can have virtual and physical evidence of his ex-wife verbally and physically abusing him and get his accusations thrown out the window while when she comes out with those same accusations with almost no evidence the man on the other hand loses one of the biggest roles of his entire career and probably might lose a whole nother while the woman on the other hand ends up in one of the biggest franchises of her entire career i never want to hear y'all argue that gender inequality doesn't exist or how about this, when a woman admits to drugging men and then stealing their money, yet still becomes one of the biggest musical artists of our modern day and age. Or goes on to make music that literally degrades women and portray them as sex objects. I never want to hear y'all argue that gender inequality doesn't exist. Or one of my favorite ones, how a woman can literally go off in interviews and on friggin' Twitter and brag about how she raped men at a young age. And these things were so unaddressed that they're almost unheard of by a lot of people. I never want to hear y'all argue that gender inequality doesn't exist. Or how about the story of a young man who went to a party, got a little bit drunk, and a woman tried to take advantage of that by overpowering him, getting on top of him, trying to take off his clothes, and kissing him despite him telling him to her to stop. While everyone around them just looked at him and said, why aren't you letting her do it? I never want to hear y'all argue that gender inequality doesn't exist when the only time you talk about gender inequality, it's about what one gender is doing to the other instead of gender inequality as a whole. Because both genders have problems on both sides. And if you're not going to be willing to address both, then the only thing that's unequal is what you're talking about when it comes to being unequal. And you didn't make babies with an 8% man. You made babies with a guy in the middle. Please explain to me why you want a guy who's so high up now. I feel That's why I really want to understand. Wrong. I feel there's nothing wrong with wanting a stepdaddy with high value. Like, it's okay for me wanting my kids to go to private school. Like, really? If that makes Yeah, no, like, no, I think. Well, tell that, me why. Tell me why it's okay. Because. If I find a guy and he's high value and he's okay with, I I just don't see how it's like, oh, she got kids. Oh, uh -uh. I understand it is like more options out there, but it's just like, um, it's possible. Really? 
So you don't you don't see any problem, you don't see any issue with wanting your kids to go to private school that you cannot afford to pay for and your husband can't afford to pay for. No, like if that's what I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you and I'm gonna tell you this. That's then that's one of the that's one of the issues in our community. That a woman like yourself could honestly come up and say, I have I don't see any problem getting somebody who had nothing to do with this to pay for the bill. That's that welfare state mentality. No, that's it's that, not. Listen, I listen, think that li- that's... Li- listen. I'm not insulting you, man, but listen. I'm you saying... can't afford it. Your husband can't afford it. That means you don't get it. The only way you could get your kids in private school is to find somebody else who's willing to put your kids in private school. You want your kids in private school? Get a nanny, get a tutor, work with them to get them a scholarship. That's what you're supposed to do. Go get a second job. Go, go, go. Don't, don't go get your hair and that's done. Another oh, listen, thing, like, I'm listen, mom li- and I'm, uh, okay. okay. Ma'am. In this life, yeah. we get what we work, what we earn and worth. You want somebody else to pay your bills. That is unfair. It is selfish. How? Because you don't have the money. And I you do said, have the but I not have, you can't afford to put thing, your like, kids on oh, Jesus. Comes from money. Okay, okay, let me go ahead and grab this mute button. Because you said if somebody wants to come along and put your kids in private school but you can't afford to put your kids in private school I, that's what you said I didn't say that I can't you, afford but you said if somebody wants to come along and put your kids in private school by implication meaning they're going to be paying for it not you I'm not trying to place semantics that's true things. yeah that's what I'm saying is yeah exactly. they'll be paying for it if they're my husband It's a commonplace observation that many men sexualize their non-sexual emotions and feelings. Thus, it creates the urge for them to dominate and penetrate women. Many men engage in behavior that would result in women being stigmatized. Terms such as slut, nympho, easy lay, and so on. Many men claim that their sexual behavior is biological when actually research suggests that this is men's need to reinforce and control women's sexuality. I don't know what it is, but men texting me, hi, hey, what's up? It seems kind of gaslighty to me. I think you have the audacity to say that to me, which is good for you. But like for me, like, do I want to read that? No, I think it's manipulation. I think you're trying to make me feel bad for you. I'm just going to be gay.